Hello everybody. Welcome to Greg's Beer Reviews today. Time to take that walk and go see what's in the fridge today. Hey guys, thanks for stopping by Rare Beer Reviews today. Today's beer comes from Dogfish Head. This is their uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo. And uh, I've actually been to the brewery up there, guys, in Milton, Delaware. Uh, nice little facility. They were in the process of expanding when I was there. So I think they probably got that construction complete. And uh, the uh, the brewery makes some very tasty beers, guys. Uh, uh, Sam Calion uh, has been doing uh, craft beers for quite a while. Uh, never met the guy. understand he's a very nice person. Uh, wish he had been there the day that I was there, but he was not. Uh, did the tour. Uh, nice little operation. Like I said, they've expanded since I was there. So uh, We'll see what this brings to the table. I do like some of the Dogfish Heads beers. Some of them are really, really tasty. Some of them, they go out of the box, and I've not been a big fan of, but typically they do a good job, and they make some big beers. The, uh, uh, the 120 is a monster beer. And usually you can tell that. See, this has a uh, gold color, bronze color, or whatever color, copper color cap on this one. Whenever you see that bright, fluorescent, yellow, radioactive colors, cap on there. That usually means those are the monster beers. And uh, they're usually probably pricey, $10 or more for some of those beers. This is a big beer for what it is. This is a pale ale, but it's 8.5%. I would classify that as an imperial pale ale. I'm not sure if that's an actual category, but at 8.5%, this is a big boy's beer. This is going to be a little more potent than your 5 or 6 percenter. Uh, this came from Rico. Rico sent it to me. Matter of fact, he sent me two of them, one to review and one to enjoy later. Uh, says here, he has wrote uh, Dogfish Head Pennsylvania Tuxedo. Uh, he says it's bottled on 10 14 16. He bought a four pack uh, for 10 99 So a lot of times when these beers get to the 8, 9, 10 percent, they go from six pack to the four pack. 8.5 percent is right on the borderline to me. Uh, so, uh, for ten ninety nine for an 8 percenter, to me it sounds a little pricey. Just a little bit. Not much, but a little bit pricey. Uh, man, I, you can buy, I can buy a six pack of, uh, of, uh, what is it, uh, six pack of, was it, Commodore from, uh, boy, getting old sucks and your memory goes and everything else goes, from, uh, people that make sculpting. Uh, about this point. That's where I was trying to go. And buy a 10 pack of that 10% for $10. Between 10 and $11 for six, and it's 10%. And you can get all six of them for the same price that you're going to pay for an 8.5% of this. Different style of beer, though, but a lot of times once they realize uh, they got the following, uh, they'll drop from a six pack to a four pack and still charge you the same amount. It's like when you go in the grocery store and you're buying cereal or detergent and uh, uh, new improved size, they downsize the box or the package and they charge you the same price. You're getting less, but you're paying the same or more. That's how it works. All right, uh, here it says, uh, picked up a four pack of spruce infused 8.5% ABV Pale Ale, 50 IBUs, Brewed in collaboration with Woolrich Outerwear Company, featuring Pacific hop varieties and fresh green spruce chip. Woolrich Outerwear Company. Mm. 
not think I've heard of another brewery collaborating with a clothing company instead of another brewery. So that's a new one on me. I wonder what influence they had on that other than giving the man some money. Hmm. I don't know, so it's uh, hard to tell. Anyway, let's see where this goes, guys. Ah. Uh, Eight and a half percent. I don't think it has the IBUs on the bottle anywhere. Let me take a quick look. Eight and a half. Woolridge, and they did put uh, two guys on there that's sporting some kind of fancy flannel underwear, it looks like, on the label here. I guess that's what they got out of it. They got their name on there underneath the dogfish label. They showed two, two goons dressed up in, in uh, some kind of whatever. Whatever. Uh, no, it doesn't have it on there. So let me step over to untap just to see by chance if they have it. And 50. Of course, that's what Rico says it is. So maybe that's where he got his information from. So 50 IBUs on there, which isn't too bad. It shouldn't be too bitter for pale ale. That's about where it should be. Once you start getting up to 65, 70 and all that, those are your IPA IBUs. So uh, uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo pays homage to the... Uh, Flannel-suited hunters and gatherers who dwell deep in the backcountry woods of central Pennsylvania. And that's what they've got on here. We've got a couple of guys in some kind of flannel body wear. Full side, full... Almost looks like something the old lady sleeps in. Yeah. Don't think you'll catch me in that. Uh, Pennsylvania Tuxedo Brewed in collaboration with family-run outerwear company Woolridge. Our two like-minded companies came together to make a beer with Pacific Northwest hot varieties to make a concoction with a grassy citrus kick complemented by the resinous con conifer qualities of fresh green spruce tips. We went into the forest of northern Pennsylvania and Georgetown, Delaware and picked these fresh tips ourselves. But I hope they got the landowner's permission before they went in and did that. Hmm. Alright guys, that's all we need to talk about, so while I pop the cap on this, I will tell you the cuisine is Pan-Asian, the cheeses are earthy, Camembert Fontina, your nutty cheeses, Asiago Colby Parmesan, your tangy cheeses, Rick Adam Feta, and the meat is poultry, glass water, pint back and iron tumbler, mug, sign, sidel, I'm using my favorite tulip glass, it is, it is definitely my favorite glass, I use it for just about everything now guys, and I apologize if it chaps your ass, sorry, and not recommended for extended salary. 8.3%. Uh, the alcohol is going to let it keep, but if they use, if it's a hot forward beer, the hops will fade. And maybe the spruce chips will. I'm not sure. I've never brewed with them. Uh, hardly any, about a quarter finger of head on that. Very clear beer. Tells me it's a filtered beer. A lot of bubbles streaming up. It is a rich copper colored amber color. A uh, darker uh, color than what your typical IPAs would be. Or even your typical pails, even though that's uh, 8. Uh, 5, 8.3, 8.5%. Let's get a nose on it. Right off the bat, I'm smelling coffee. And I don't know if that's the spruce tips or whatever. I'm getting coffee on the nose, that's where. I think my nose is out of whack. Maybe that's the spruce tips. I swear it smells like coffee to me. He also have a little bit of pininess in there. Pacific Northwest hops do have it, a monster aroma, piney, grapefruit, pineapple -y. A little bit of citrusiness in there, but damn if it don't smell like coffee. Well, let me dive into this. I'm curious now. Uh, see if I get coffee on the taste or I get spruce tips. Cheers, everybody. Cheers, Rico. Spruce tips. Out to Wazula. Wow. Big time spruce tips. Like sticking a, a spruce branch in your mouth. Wow. That's like a Christmas tree in a glass. I'm not so sure about that. I don't know if any of you guys, uh, I'm bringing, I'm telling my age by saying this. Back in the, in my childhood days when my parents were putting up a Christmas tree, a lot of times 
they would buy this aerosol can of snow that you would spray on your Christmas tree to make it look like it had snow on it. And if you ever got any of that stuff in your mouth, maybe it was made with spruce, I don't have any idea. To me, that's what it reminds me of. Uh, the, the aroma of that, I guess it had that spruce smell to it to, to enhance that spray, but I probably remember as a kid probably licking some of that, and, it's, and that's what I'm getting on this glass. It tastes like that artificial snow that you sprayed on your Christmas trees back then. <laughs> Big time spruce. It's taking up the whole front seat, it's stuffed in one window, coming out the other. Spruce. Most definitely it's not hidden. Not getting any coffee on the taste, guys. I guess that's what I was smelling, was the spruce. But I'm not getting it, I'm tasting the spruce and not tasting any coffee, that's for sure. So, But that's what, uh, that's what it reminds me of. It reminds me of that artificial snow that you used to spray on your Christmas tree. I don't know if they still make that anymore or not. It probably causes cancer or something. They had to stop doing it. But uh, as a kid, uh, I remember them doing that. So, and that's what it smelled like, because they evidently had spruce in the spray or something to make it smell Christmassy or, or something. Or evidently I tasted it or something. And that's what it reminded me of. It brought immediately brought back memories of that artificial snow. Well, there's no, there's no argument about it. The spruce tips, I mean, spruce tips, they're in the front seat, and they're probably taking up the back seat, too. There's no room for anybody else but spruce. It's right out of the fridge, 40 degrees. Let me sip on it and take it back and let her taste it, and then we'll come back and do the final chug here shortly. All right, guys, I'm back. I've been sitting on about 30 minutes. Decent beer. It is a decent beer. Something different. Uh, not blowing my hair back, or my socks off. It gives me bad memories of eating that thing snow as a child. Uh, too sprucey for me. I mean, uh, there's a difference between hops and there's a difference between a Christmas tree. Uh, this is more of a Christmas tree than it is with a, a bunch of hops. So, uh, it's okay. I do think it's a well-made beer. They, that's what they were after. Uh, brewing with spruce tips and that's exactly what you're getting. If you don't like spruce tips, you're not going to like this. The other half didn't care for it at all. It's okay with me. It's not something I would probably run out and purchase. Uh, I'm wanting more of a hot presence than a Christmas tree presence. So, uh, this, uh, and now that it's warmed up, I am getting those spruce tips. The coffee is faded, and I'm getting those spruce tips on the nose big time. And I'm getting it on the taste super big time. So, final chug. I will say this, the alcohol is very well hidden for an eight and a half percenter. There's a nice balance to the beer between the malt and the spruciness. The spruce is so overpowering that I'm not tasting hardly any hops. And I'm, I know they brewed with hops. Uh, they can't just brew with spruce chips. You've got to have some kind of bittering hops and all that stuff in there. So it's fairly balanced. Uh, I am going to, it's got the date on it. It's kind of hard to read. But you can see it, and this one has uh, uh, bottled on 10, 14, or 16 on there. So, uh, and they've got the uh, ABV on there. I, the IBUs are not on here, which would be kind of nice to know. Uh, and, I, and I told you it was 50, I think. Yeah, 50 IBUs. So it's not too bitter. Uh, guys, as far as I'm concerned, uh, it's, I'm on the fence between a B plus and an A minus. And the only reason I would leave lean more toward the A- minus is because I know these guys brew some quality beers and it does have the bottled on date, not an enjoy by date or a best by date uh, in the ABP, but I would like to have seen them put that 50 IBUs on there somewhere. But it's available, it's probably on their site because Untapped has it. So uh, I'm going to give them the benefit of the doubt, guys. Uh, uh, they do make some tasty stuff. I'm going to give it the uh, A-. minus. Uh, numeric range on this would be 90. Just barely into it. I was between the 89 and the 90, but it's got the date on it, so I'm gonna go ahead and give it the uh, the 90. But it's not my cup of tea. I don't think I would run out and buy this. Matter of fact, Rico sent me two of these. I'm gonna have to wait a 
couple days before I can drink the other one. That's just a little too sprucey to me. It's like drinking a Christmas tree. <laughs> so, uh, uh, over to Beer Advocate, 88 in the very good range. I'm close. Um, I'm two points above that, and I'm giving them the benefit of the doubt. And over to Rate Beer, Rate Beer has 90 overall, but 52 in the stop. And for our final check-in, we will run over to Untapped, and Untapped has it at 3.82, which is their B+. Plus. So, everybody's right there in that vicinity, between an 88 and a 90. And uh, B+, plus, A- minus beer. That's where everybody is falling in at. I agree with that. So, if you've had this one from Dogfish Head, their Pennsylvania Tuxedo, 8.5 percenter. This is a... This is one a little bit more of an E, and that's another reason I went ahead and give it to A. The alcohol is very well hidden in this beer, guys. I'm not getting hardly any alcohol notes at all. So, very well done. Sam and the guys up there do a pretty good job there at uh, Dogfish Head. And they, they do some pretty big beers, too. But this one is done very well. If you like spruce tips, if you like sucking on a spruce tip, you'll probably like this beer. A little too sprucey for this guy, though. Alright guys, if you've had it, let me know what you think. Come on back tomorrow. Let's dig something out of that fridge. See you then.